<laughs> Which real life cheat codes do you know? Have friends generationally older and younger than yourself? Worked at a call center for a credit card company. If you ever get hit with a late fee, politely call customer service and ask if there's a possibility of getting it waived. We didn't have to ask a supervisor or anything, just pushed it through. Have done this multiple times now for my own cards. Don't pay late fees. Editing to add, if you do call customer service and they help you out please 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 stay on the line and fill out the survey and give them all perfect scores. We got big bonuses on our scores and it really meant a lot when people took the time to do it. If you want to complain do it in the comments box not on the actual scores. One bad score can tank the bonuses even if it was a bad rating on the product and not the service provided by the agent. Talk positive about people behind their backs. Don't put who an email will be sent to until after you have it ready to send so you can't accidentally send an unedited or unfinished emails. When reheating rice in the microwave, put a little bit of water in the bowl so it heats up fluffy again. As a management consultant, two of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten are, never be afraid to be the one to end the call, and don't sell past the close. The first one's obvious everyone hates that awkward period at the end of a conference call, when it's pretty much over, but no one's willing ready to just underscore say underscore it. If it's really over, don't hesitate to just say awesome, thanks so much, everyone, and have a great day. The second one's actually way more important if you're in a meeting trying to land a contract, and they say sounds good. Let's do it. Then shut up, shake their hand, say we'll get you a draft agreement tomorrow, and walk. Out. The. Door. No small talk, an underscore definitely underscore no following up on that point we were discussing in the middle of the meeting that you seemed interested in. There's no upside. You can't make them underscore more underscore ready, they've already agreed. Best worst case is you bring up some kind of new point that makes them want to step back and talk more about the overall plan before they're ready to sign. Worst worst case is you bring up something they didn't realize and you scotch the deal before you've left the room, which I've seen happen more than once. Being polite increases your odds of getting what you want, smiley face. To learn something repeat it to yourself three times on the day you learn it, two more times the next day, once the day after that, and you know it most of the time. Diarrhea is the best excuse to get out of anything. No one questions it and no one expects you to go to a doctor for it. Asterisk asterisk managers asterisk asterisk give your employees the credit they deserve for everything they do, especially talk them up to asterisk your asterisk bosses. This is a literal win-win. Your employees love you for respecting them, and your boss loves you for successfully managing a great team. Too many times I see bad managers bring their own egos into the mix, feeling like they need to compete with their own employees to take credit for jobs well done. This does not have the effect they think it has. Confidence can get you super far. Like, if you just act extremely confident and normal and totally fine about whatever it is you're doing, anything nearly, people won't question it. You're supposed to be here, just walk on in. Or out, or whatever. That's the attitude to have. I cannot believe how well this works for some of the nicest people as well as the biggest jerks alive. It works. Cutting out daily drinks with sugar like sodas or frappuccinos really helps with weight loss if you do nothing else. Automated phone systems don't understand nonsense. If you need to speak to a person answer the prompts with things like chicken nuggets. Or shoelace. It will assume an error in its language system and route you to a person. When your alarm goes off in the morning, do not think. Only react. If you sit up immediately and start getting out of bed, it becomes a reflex. No more lying in bed for hours trying to wake up. Now I hear my alarm and brain is alert and ready. If you have a hobby, relegate one day a month at asterisk 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 least asterisk 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 to doing something major tied to it. If you like fishing in the afternoon some days, Set aside a whole day to start early, go to that place you wanted to fish at, and set up for the asterisk 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 whole asterisk 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 day to do what you enjoy. I, personally, like tanks. I make model kits and play games involving them. So, once a month, I make it a point to find a museum that's hosting tanks and go visit it. Bovington is a two-hour drive, 
but I never feel like it wasn't worth it, even if I'm just wandering around stuff I've seen before. Simply find a big thing tied to your hobby, and do it. You'll find that hobby far more engaging. I got a job as security at a concert venue because ticket prices were getting to be insane and I wanted to see some shows. Turns out I also got to meet some rock stars. Never commit a crime during the commission of another crime. Example, if you are transporting illicit substances, don't go speeding around in a car with a busted taillight and expired tags. Being unnecessarily nice and thoughtful out of the blue pays back huge returns. It feels good doing right by people, but it's hugely helpful in your career to have a great reputation. Competence is rarely enough, if you want to be extremely successful, you have to cultivate relationships. Remember people's birthdays, write them down. Get them small, random gifts occasionally, and not in exchange for a favor. Show kindness to people lower on the ladder, you may report to them later. Life isn't Game of Thrones. Being a jerk usually, though not always, catches up to you. The opposite is also true, pleasantly enough. People like talking about themselves more than they like hearing about you. If you interact with people for work memorize one thing about them, could be a kid's name, a sport they like, a hobby they do, their job, etc. Ask them about it every once in a while. People are always surprised and appreciate your interest in them. The infinite yogurt glitch. All you need to make more yogurt is milk and a little yogurt. Repeat as necessary. When someone's wrong on the internet, type out what you want to say, then delete it once you've got it out of your system. It's incredibly cathartic, as you organize your sources and logic, you get the time to sort out what you think and why, and you can calm down a bit as you let reason take the wheel instead of your emotions, which lets you realize that nothing you say matters to them anyway. If you find that your finished product is particularly well written, feel free to save it off to the side as a sort of personal study, if you want. Excellent Zen hack. Make people laugh within a minute of meeting them. They will remember you and help you. The second button on the right is mute at those annoying rear gas pump TV adverts. For me it was maintain a healthy weight which most people think is to help your overall health, and yes that's very true, but from a pain standpoint it's really great. Like several of you, I'm sure, I'm just in pain all the time. Maybe it's my back, or my neck, or my knees, but goddamn if getting from the beginning of the day to the end of the day doesn't hurt. Turns out, losing weight and keeping that under control, which means adding in the gym a few times a week and watching what I eat for four to five days a week, makes all that pain go away. And in hindsight I knew this but to actually feel it was a world of difference. Someone once told me you suffer alone and it's true. You also feel good alone. So, better to have the latter of the two options. If it takes less than five minutes, do it right away. Saying hello in an unexpected way knocks the person you're talking to out of their groove and changes how they interact with you. Instead of how's it going, I say how's life treating you, and get a more engaged interaction. The more you understand, the less you have to memorize. Understanding is a knowledge compression algorithm. X. Pythagorean theorem equals distance formula equals formula for a circle. It's easier said than done but life is literally so much easier now that I am 100 pounds less than I used to be, I am way more rested, probably had mild sleep apnea before, literally sprint upstairs now, barely sweat anymore, spend less on food and now that my body is adjusted I'm no more hungry than before, clothes actually fit and I'm excited to try new stuff on, everyone treats you better from co-workers to your boss to random people you see, women are much more engaged when talking to me and I've even been cold approached a few times now. I used to basically be invisible to society so it is such a dramatic change from where I was two years ago. Learnt this today in first aid, use a syringe to suction out a splinter. If you have something nice to say to someone, like you think they did something neat or have a cool shirt or made a good moral choice, it's generally good to say so and not wait for a better time to tell them. You may not remember or bother later, but most people really benefit from encouragement or appreciation when it's genuine. If you have some criticism or something rather mean to say, try to wait a bit. You may find you don't need to say it, or you may find a way to express it that will be more useful and digestible to the person, rather than just pissing them off. Obviously they aren't always possible, but it's a good life hack to be kind and encouraging on the spur of the moment, 
and to be circumspect and thoughtful about criticism. One that I used to know years ago, when I would come home from college I worked for a home appliance rental company in delivery and install. Sometimes we would deliver coin card operated laundry units to apartments. One time we did a full replacement of about 12 coin operated washers and dryers to new Maytags that used a card system. The senior guy who drove our delivery truck and told me what to do showed me how to reset the units and make them automatically go into run mode and how to force off the system just by pushing buttons. No key card needed, nothing to unlock or disassemble. He was surprised by how many questions I asked and he was pleased that I was showing interest in the work and said as much. Well yeah, I said, these are the same exact units we have at college. I'm never paying for laundry again. He looked at me for a solid 10 seconds, rubbed his eyes and said, I'm going to pretend I didn't just hear that whenever I asked questions from then on he always asked why I wanted to know. Didn't pay for laundry anymore at school though. LOL.